Welcome to the Peasant Man Athletes Meeting. We'd like to consider ourselves pioneers as one of the first races to conduct online athletes meetings. Peasant Man is an officially sanctioned USAT event managed by a certified USAT race director. There will still be a mandatory race meeting the evening before the event. We'd like you to know that it is still your responsibility to know the rules of the course. But here is everything that we will be covering. The Peasant Man Half Relay. This race consists of a 1.2 mile swim, a 58 mile bike ride, and a 13.1 mile run, beginning and ending in Indian Pines Park in Penyan, New York. The transition area opens at 5 a.m. and closes one half hour before your race. Your race starts at 7.30 a.m., so you must be out of transition area by 7 a.m. Body marking for all events starts at 5 a.m. in the transition area. When transition closes, you must go to the swim start and be counted into the water for safety reasons. The swim starts at 7.30 sharp with a cutoff time of 9.30, so you will have two hours to complete your 1.2 mile swim. There is one lap. You'll be going around the furthest buoy from the shore, a big bright orange one. When you're done with your swim, you'll exit the water through the giant orange peasant man arch and head straight for the transition area. Once you are in the transition area and have crossed the timing mat, be sure to pass your relay timing chip off to your cyclist. The Peasant Man Bike Course. It's the same course for all the races. It's just a matter of how many laps you will have to do. The bike course was created by our friends at Geneva Bicycle Center. They're the official bike shop for Peasant Man and they will be here on race day for all of your biking needs. It's a 29 mile bike loop, meaning for the half steel distance, you'll be doing it two times. This brings the total bike distance to 58 miles. This is what makes it a steel distance course. Each lap has three aid stations, so for your race, you will be passing six water stations. It's important to know that we will be supplying you with a race-specific colored sticker that is to be placed on the front of your helmet. Each race has a different color sticker, and this is how we tell you apart from the other racers. From the transition area, you will exit the park through the designated chute, mount your bike at the mount line, and head on out. From Old Pines Trail, turn left onto Route 54A. Go seven miles to Branchport, to the first traffic light on the course. Here is where you'll take a right onto Guyanoga Road. Soon you'll come to the first of three aid stations on the right. Head through the cool scenery and go another seven miles to Route 364. Take a left and go up a hill for a quarter mile. This is the only significant climb on the entire course. Then take a right on Volk Road and go two miles. Take a right on Haven's Corners Road and go two more miles. Take a left on Lovejoy Road. We call this Ken's Corner, named after Ken Gibbs, one of the course workers who has manned this intersection from year one. After a mile and a half, take a right onto Ferguson Corners Road. After a short distance, you'll see aid station number two at Tomian's Farm Market. Stop here and get refreshed and take a right onto 14A. It's important to keep in mind that there is a chute that we have put coming off Ferguson Corners onto 14A. This is a high speed road and you must stay within the chute on the large shoulder. We will have a volunteer there who will be instructing you to stay within the chute. Anybody who does not go through this chute will be immediately disqualified. Go another seven miles back into town. You'll have quite a downhill for the last four miles of this stretch then turn right onto Court Street. Here's where you'll hit aid station number three at the high school, which also doubles as our special needs area. Cyclists for the full, half, and relays are more likely to use special needs because the rest of you are about to finish. Turn left onto Burns Terrace, then right onto 54A. Soon you will come to a well-marked chute that is manned by a police officer and a bike course director. This is where the sticker on the front of your helmet comes into play. If there's no sticker on your helmet, there will be no guidance from our bike chute director. This person will notice the sticker and either send you through the chute onto your next lap or guide you over to the finish chute where you'll turn down into the park. There's an abundance of signage on the course, so keep an eye out for the yellow signs showing the direction and distances. When you finish the bike, follow the directions back into transition. Do not ride your bike across the mat. After getting your bike into the transition area, you must first rack your bike where you pass your chip onto your runner. The bike course closes at 5.45 p.m. For more details on the bike course, go to peasantman.com. There, you can download a printable course map, view elevation details, and check out a Map My Ride version of the course. The Peasant Man Run Course. It's a 6.55 mile out and back, mostly flat. Once again, it's the same course for all races. It's just a matter of how many laps you're gonna be doing. 
For the half, you'll be doing two laps, bringing your total to 13.1 miles. From the transition area, you'll follow the chute out of the park. From Old Pines Trail, turn left on 54A and run along the sidewalk, as there will be some cyclists on the road. It then turns into a very wide shoulder, so please use the sidewalks where available. Then turn left onto Westlake Road at the first aid station, which also doubles as a special needs station. Go all the way to the end of Westlake Road and turn briefly onto Central Avenue, where you'll come to a turnaround. Then head back the way you came, all the way back to the park. You can run on either side of Westlake Road at your own discretion. On Westlake Road, there will be two additional aid stations that you'll pass, plus one at the park. So for each out and back, you'll be passing seven aid stations. That's more than one per mile. Sweet. At the end of each trip to the park, you'll turn around and head back out. Unless you're finishing, of course. You can't get lost on the run course. Again, there are lots of signs on the course, and you can follow the orange arrows on the road. The roads are not closed, so you will want to watch for the sparse residential traffic. When you get back to the park to finish, you cross the finish line. That's pretty obvious. If you have any additional questions, please go to Pezzaman.com. Here you can get more info on nutrition, parking and directions, pack and pickup, race check-in, and course maps. Don't forget that we will have a Q&A session the evening before the race at Indian Pines Park, where we'll go over all these details again and answer all the questions you might have, including nutrition details. Thank you for checking out our online athletes meeting. We'll see you on race day.